This is the Audient ID44 Mark II, and this is a premium audio interface, which is why it costs a bit more than some of the other ones out there. But it also has four of the juiciest mic preamps that you have ever heard, plus it has class-leading converters, so that's really what you're paying for here. It's like having console quality right on your desktop. You will absolutely hear a difference when you plug into this audio interface. You also have sins and returns to easily incorporate outboard gear, two JFET DI inputs for guitar or bass, for analog outputs, two optical inputs and outputs, two independent headphone outputs, physical knobs and switches for everything, three programmable function buttons for things like switching speakers or mono mode, dedicated buttons for talkback, mute, and dim, scroll control, an on-screen mixer, loopback, and a ton more. So in this video, we'll go through everything, starting with unboxing to getting your drivers. We'll check out all of the features and functions, go over the mixer, routing, see how to record, how to set up a QMix, how to use loopback, and everything else that you want to know about the Audient ID44 Mark II. First, we'll start with the box. Feel free to pause if you want to read all of this. Then we'll pop it open and see what's inside. Here's your quick start guide, and you can download the full manual from the website. Just hit pause if you want to read all of this. Then we'll pop open this box, and in here you have your power supply with the regional adapters, I'm in the US, so I'll use this one. But there are also adapters for the UK, EU, and Australia. In this box, you'll find the USB cables. You might need to fish around to get them out of there. You'll get a USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-C to USB-A cable. And there's the interface. Here's a quick look at the difference in size between the ID14 Mark II and the ID44 Mark II. All right, so that's everything included in the box. The ID44 Mark II unit is really built like a tank. It has all metal construction, and it really feels like quality whenever you handle it. It also features a modern minimalistic design and color scheme with its black top and smoke gray accent. The bottom has four rubber feet to keep the unit from sliding around, and you'll also find your serial number and pin on the bottom. On the front, you have two independent headphone outputs with individual volume knobs for each. As you can see, there's actually three ports here, two quarter inch ports and a one eighth inch port or 3.5 millimeter port. So you could actually plug in three pairs of headphones, but output one will share an audio stream. Over to the left, you have two JFET DI inputs for guitar or bass. And when you plug into one of the inputs on the front, it will override the corresponding input on the rear. So that just means if you have your guitar plugged into input one on the front, you wouldn't want to plug your microphone into input one on the rear, since that input will be bypassed. So just plug your microphone into a different input if you want to use it simultaneously with your guitar. To the rear of the unit, you have four of the award-winning Audient console mic preamps with 60 dB of clean and juicy gain. And that's enough for condenser microphones and most dynamic microphones if you're using them for music-related purposes. However, if you are using broadcast-style dynamic microphones for voiceover, podcasting, live streaming or YouTube videos, then you'll probably want to have a Cloudlifter type device on hand for mics like the Shure SM7B, which of course require a minimum of 60 dB of gain and oftentimes sound better with 65 to 70 dB of gain. You can also use quarter inch TRS cables for line level devices like an external synth or the output of a mixer. And we also have inserts on channels one and two which makes it very easy to incorporate outboard gear. And we'll have a separate chapter for the inserts. 
Then we have four line outputs, and this is where you would connect your studio monitors or maybe a headphone amp or other external gear. You have a word clock output, two optical inputs and outputs, so you can easily expand the ID44 up to 20 in and 24 out. So if you want to add another 16 mic inputs, then this is where you would connect your external mic preamps. Here's your USB-C port, the power port, and the on-off switch. On the top, you have your four input gain knobs, and these are sturdy metal knobs, by the way. There are signal and peak lights for each input. Then you have per channel switches for 48 volt, phantom power, minus 10 dB pad, and a low cut or high pass at 100 hertz to remove low end rumble from a signal. This is the main volume knob, and it's also your scroll control knob when you activate the ID button. There's a dedicated button for dim and cut, also known as mute, and talkback. Then you have three programmable function buttons, and you can assign the function in the mixer for things like mono mode, phase flip, and to switch the speakers. Here's your volume knobs for your headphone outputs, as we've already seen. This is your USB status light and the eight segment main meters. And these indicate the output level of the ID Mixer app. So you'll still need to keep an eye on the meters in your DAW. There's also a Kensington lock on the right side of the unit. Yes, the ID44 Mark II does cost more than other audio interfaces out there with a similar IO or even with more IO. So why is that? Well, what you're really paying for is the amazing mic preamps and the superb ADC or analog to digital converters. This is one of those premium audio interfaces where you'll actually hear a difference, a positive difference, whenever you plug into it. The mic preamps have an insanely wide frequency response from 10 Hertz to 65 K while most audio interfaces under a thousand dollars and really even a lot over $1,000 have mic preamps with a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20K. And sometimes you'll find something with uh, 20 hertz to 35K. So that might be a reason why you'd want to consider an Audient because you're always going to get great mic preamps. I mean, even with something like the Audient Evo 16, which we already have a full video on that, you're getting mic preamps with a frequency response of 10 hertz to 40K. And that unit is under $500. So Audient is always on point with their mic preamps. And of course, you know, there's more to an audio interface than just preamps. And I'm not saying any of those other audio interfaces are bad. I happen to own, you know, several audio interfaces with 20 hertz to 20K preamps, and you can make a hit song with any of them. But it's just something that you might want to consider whenever you're comparing features with other audio interfaces, you know. The frequency response of mic preamps is an often overlooked feature whenever you're making comparisons with other audio interfaces. And when you plug into the ID44 Mark II, you are going to hear a difference. You know, one thing I really like about these preamps when paired with the SM7B, and I am using a Coda Stealth as well right now, which is, it's like a cloud lifter. But with these preamps, the SM7B has a present and articulate top end, a natural, wide, and defined low end, and a clear and juicy mid-range. Whereas with some preamps, when you use them with the SM7B, uh, you end up getting a resonant, sort of woofy lower mid-range, and a harsh, you know, like a harsh resonance around 2.2K or so, and a round and warm bottom end that kind of just overpowers everything. So, you end up having to do a lot of EQ to carve out all of that resonance and the boxiness. And you just don't get that with the ID44 Mark II. But it's not just the SM7B that sounds great through these preamps. I could even use this cheap $99 Audio-Technica AT2020 condenser microphone, and there are no effects at all. This is completely raw, straight into the preamps, no plugins, no effects, and it sounds crisp, it sounds clear, and it sounds articulate. I could even use this cheap $59 microphone and it sounds great through these preamps. Again, no effects, completely raw. I can get in closer for that proximity effect in a world 
where one man fights for great preamps. All right, the bottom on that really sounds great, but I can engage the high pass and get rid of some of that extreme low end, make things, you know, a little bit more clear. Check one, two, check one, two. 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 And back on in a world where one man fights. Okay, we, we get the idea, but one more time here. Check one, two, check one, two. Great proximity effect in that, but again, use that high pass filter. Boom, dials out some of that extreme low end. Or I could switch to a standard dynamic mic like the Shure SM58, straight into the audio interface. Again, no effects, it sounds great. I could turn on some effects and now it sounds even better because of course we have some EQ in there, some compression, some de and uh, some other effects in there as well. Or we could switch to the Rode Broadcaster. And this is the mic that I'm using for the majority of the voiceover. Now, right now there are no effects and it sounds great, very natural. It might be a little bit sibilant because this is a very sensitive uh, condenser microphone. So I'll pop on some effects. All right, there we go. Now we got a bit of EQ, compression, de and a much more professional sound. So I describe these preamps as natural, clear, articulate, defined, sweet, and above all else, juicy. They just have a special just juiciness to them, you know? They really are some of the best preamps out there on the market. So when you're comparing audio interfaces and you're wondering why one with less IO, less analog IO, is more expensive than one with more analog IO, well, what you're really paying for are those internal components. The clock, the preamps, the converters, you know, things you can't even see or touch, but you can hear. They will make a difference to your overall sound. So that might be a reason why you would, you know, want to choose the ID44 over something else. But it really comes down to the features that you need for your studio and the amount that you're willing to spend. Again, there are plenty of great audio interfaces out there, and you can make a hit song or a hit podcast with any of them. I just wanted to point out why the ID44 Mark II cost a bit more and why you should consider internal components when comparing the other features between audio interfaces in your price range. Before we connect the ID44 to our computer, let's go ahead and get our drivers. Come to the site and download the driver for your system. Even if you are on Macintosh, you'll still want to install the driver so you can get the ID mixer. You should also download the full manual while you're here. Then install the driver. All right, there we go. Next, we'll connect the ID44 to the computer. So connect the USB cable. And of course you can use either one of the included cables, but I'm using a third party USB-C cable because I need something a bit longer. Connect your power cable. And you'll also want to connect monitors or headphones to the ID44 because you're not going to hear DAW audio through speakers connected to the computer or through laptop speakers. So again, make sure you connect speakers or headphones directly to the ID44 Mark II. Then turn it on and we're good. Now, after you flipped on the ID44, you probably got this pop-up on your computer. And here we can register the unit and see the free software or you can head directly to the website. So create an account or sign in if you already have one, which I do. Fill out all of your information. Again, you'll find that serial number and pin on the bottom of the unit and register. After that, you'll have access to the free software that is currently available. Now this software is optional. You can download everything or download nothing and the ID44 will work the same exact way. After you connected the ID44, your computer probably automatically switched to using the ID44 as the playback engine for your computer. And that just means that you'll hear system audio like YouTube or a media player 
through speakers connected to the ID44 and not through speakers connected to your computer or through laptop speakers. So if you're fine with that, then you can leave it like it is, or you can switch it back to your computer speakers. On Windows, just click the speaker icon, expand, and switch it back to usually Realtek on Windows. And of course, you can do the same thing on Mac. Just understand that you can have a different audio engine for your system sound and your DAW sound. So you can have things like YouTube playing through your laptop speakers and set Pro Tools to play through the ID44. Or of course, play all sound through the ID44. It's totally up to you. To access the ID app on Windows, come to your tray and right click the ID icon. And here you can set your loopback source, clock source, sample rate, buffer, check for updates, and show the mixer. You'll also see many of these same options in the mixer under setup. On Mac, you'll access this from the menu bar. With the ID Mixer, you can set up your low latency monitor mix. And adjusting the faders for the input channels or mic channels does not affect the level going into your DAW. So if you need to hear more of a mic in your headphones, you can pull this up here. Now, if you adjust a DAW channel, that will affect the level that you hear in your headphones, depending on how they are routed or through your speakers. So. If you crank the volume and the overall level seems low, make sure you turn up your DAW channel. And also make sure it isn't muted. Or check if another DAW channel is soloed. On the mic channels, you can flip the phase, then you have pan knobs for everything. You can stereo link or unlink your channels. You have solos and mutes. You can set up up to four Q mixes, which we'll get into in a minute. You can also name your channels and your mixes. Up here, you can show or hide the analog inputs, optical inputs, and the DAW returns. You can also freely adjust the size of the mixer. Down on the lower right side, we can activate talkback, phase flip, mono mode, alt speaker, dim, and cut, which is mute. Of course, when you activate these from the mixer, the corresponding light on the unit will illuminate, or vice versa. If I activate something from the unit, it will be reflected in the mixer. You can right click, phase flip, mono, and alt, and assign them to the F key of your choice. Whenever you hover over those controls, it will show you the F key that they are currently assigned to. The other controls, talk back, cut, and dim, have permanently assigned buttons on the unit. Under File, you can save your mixer configuration and recall it. Under View, you can show or hide the analog channels, digital channels, and the DAW returns, just like we can over here. Show System Panel will show you the routing for your outputs and the talkback input. We can also click the Stereo button to switch those outputs to mono if you wish. On the left side, you can set the optical inputs and outputs to ADAT or SPDIF, set the clock source, set how mono mode works, and adjust the trim settings for DIM and the ALT speaker. Under setup, we have many of the same controls that we have in the ID app. 
so you can quickly access them from either place. You can also store the standalone state if you want to use the ID44 without a computer. Under help, you can check for updates, check the knowledge base, and see the current version of the software and the firmware installed on the ID44. Now let's take a minute to understand how the DAW return channels work and do some routing. First, I'll set outputs one and two to main mix. And I have my main studio monitors plugged into outputs one and two. Now these DAW channels refer to the output you select in your software. So if I route studio one out of one and two, you can see that on the DAW one, two channel in the mixer and hear it through the speakers plugged into outputs one and two. If I switch studio one to outputs three and four, then you see that in the mixer and we can still hear it through the speakers plugged into outputs one and two as long as we turn up the fader for the three four channel in the master or main mix and the volume knob still works i'll switch studio one back to outputs one and two and also set windows to use one and two then if i play a video or something all windows sound will come through the same one, two channel in the mixer. And of course, you'll also hear it through your main speakers. Gain, bass, middle, treble. We all know what the, this stuff does. Or I could switch windows to use three and four. And you can also switch this on Mac. But now if I play the video, you'll see that in the DAW 3-4 channel. If I play Studio 1, you'll see that in the DAW 1-2 channel. And we'll hear them both through the speakers plugged into outputs 1 and 2. Use the mixer use to the balance. And use your ears. For cabinets, which are right over here. Click and choose, you have 22 different cabinets. Or I could plug speakers into outputs three and four, set the routing to main mix for now. Studio one is still set to outputs one and two. I'll play back, and we hear it through both sets of studio monitors at the same time. And the volume knob adjusts both sets of speakers. And Windows, which is still set to three and four, will also play through both sets of speakers at the same time. Meaning you cannot run the plugins or sample libraries from this drive. But what if I switch three and four to QA? Well, now when I play Studio One, we only hear it through our main studio monitors. And the same thing for Windows, we're only hearing it through the main monitors. Again, as long as three and four is turned up in the main mix. But I could also do this. I'll turn down three and four in the main mix, head over to QA and turn up three, four in the Q mix. And now we only hear windows through the speakers plugged into outputs three and four. And 247 gigs of unallocated space what if I turn down one and two in the main mix? Then head back to QA and turn up one, two in the Q mix. Now we only hear studio one through these small speakers and not the speakers plugged into outputs one and two. And by the way, if you set it up like this, your volume knob won't have any effect. But what about this? I'll switch three and four to DAW through. Now, before you do this, make sure you turn down the volume in Windows because again, we have Windows set to three and four. And when you use DAW through, there's no volume attenuation from the ID44 or the mixer. So that can make DAW through very useful if you need to route audio out to external gear. But in this case, we're routing it to speakers. so. Be very careful here.
Just to make a point, I'll turn off the speakers plugged into outputs three and four. I'll play the video, and we can still hear it through the speakers plugged into outputs and one and two, as long as we turn up drive. that channel in the main mix. X -fat with a usable partition of about and of course you still hear studio one through the main speakers. So let's turn down three and four in the main mix. I'll turn on the speakers plugged into outputs three and four and play the video. So technically you could form Now we only hear Windows audio through these small desktop so speakers. And the volume that. is controlled is exclusively within RPM. Windows. So, it's a cheap, low -end drive. Not that it really matters since so set up like this, our DAW will play through our main speakers and our Windows-based audio is separate and plays through these small Meaning you speakers. Meaning cannot run the plugins or sample libraries from this drive. And if you wanted to use the Alt Speaker function, you could quickly switch 3.4 to Alt Speaker in routing. So hopefully this section has shown you how powerful and flexible the mixer and routing are with the ID44 Mark II. The main takeaways would be, if you route something in your software, you'll see that in the corresponding DAW return in the mixer. And you can hear that source through your main or alt speakers by turning up the channel in the master mix. And also, if you want to route something directly out of an output, just select DAW through. If you want to quickly check your mix on different speakers, then you can use the Alt speaker function. I have the large black monitors plugged into outputs one and two, and the small black and blue monitors plugged into outputs three and four. Come to routing and set one and two to main mix, and outputs three and four to Alt speaker. Then we can activate Alt Speaker from the mixer or map it to a function button. We're using F3. Play back your DAW and we're hearing the main speakers. Press F3 and now we're hearing the Alt speakers. And your volume knob will control both sets of speakers. If one set of speakers is louder than the other, then you can boost or cut the alt speakers by 6 dB. To quickly check your mix in mono for phase issues and the overall balance, activate mono mode from the mixer, or map it to an F button. From the system panel, you can set how mono mode works. Have it play through one speaker, or both. If you want to reduce the volume but not mute it, you can use the dim function. Again, activate it from the mixer or use the dedicated dim button. From the system panel under trim, you can choose how much the volume is dimmed when activated. quickly mute the output, click cut in the mixer, or use the dedicated cut button on the unit. The ID44 Mark II has separate switches for phantom power, and you can turn it on or off per channel. So if you need phantom power for your condenser microphones, or if you're using a Cloudlifter type device for your dynamic mics, just plug in your microphone, flip on phantom power, and adjust your input gain. And that's it. You're good to go. A Q-Mix allows an artist to hear just what they want in their headphones. And this can be different from what you hear 
through your speakers. So let's say you have a vocalist and a guitar player, and each of them wants to hear more of themselves in their headphones. No problem. We have two pairs of headphones plugged into the ID44. Then I'll come to routing and set headphone one to QA and headphone two to QB. I'll come to QA in the mixer and name it vocals and name QB guitar. The mic plugged into input one is for the vocalist and the mic plugged into input three is for the guitar player. We can also name those channels in the mixer. Of course, set up your tracks in your DAW the same way you always do. Have the vocalist sing and the guitar player strum and we'll pull up the vocals and reduce the guitar a bit so the vocalist can hear themselves better. And now I feel haunted by the ghosts of our past. I wish we were good. Then do the opposite for the guitar player on cue B. two different Q mixes and a main mix for our speakers. If you happen to have something playing in your DAW at the same time, like a click track or drums, you can adjust the level of the doll return for each Q mix. If you click solo, then you can hear your cue mix through your speakers, which might help you set it up. There's actually a lot more that you can do with your cue mixes, and they can also come in very handy when using loopback. So feel free to experiment with your cue mixes. What is talkback? Well, talkback allows you to speak directly to an artist through their headphones. You can activate it from the mixer or with the dedicated button on the ID44 Mark II. But before we can use it, we need to set it up. Come to the system panel, go to talkback, and we need to set an input source. If we choose internal, then we can use a microphone connected to the ID44. Or choose external and use something like a USB mic or even the mic in your webcam. I'll choose the webcam. Then make sure you have the headphones routed to a Qmix because you won't hear this through the main speakers. Activate talkback and there you go. You can even adjust the level of the talkback for each Qmix. Great, but on that chorus, I really want you to give me more hee-hee-hee, hee-hee-hee, hee hee All right, so right now, you're doing more like a hoo-hoo-hoo, hoo-hoo-hoo, and I really want hee-hee-hee, hee-hee-hee. All right, so let's reset and try it again. Scroll control will let you use the big volume knob, sort of like a mouse scroll wheel. In fact, if you check the devices on your computer, you'll see the ID44 is also registered as a mouse. To use it, press the ID button, position your mouse over something, and turn the knob. Scroll control will work for any parameter that responds to your mouse scroll wheel. And this will vary between DAWs and plugins. In Studio One, I can position my mouse over a fader and it works with my mouse scroll wheel, so it will also work with scroll control. But it's not just DAWs. It'll also work in a browser, video editor, 
or any other program. Where this really comes in handy is when you're using a laptop and trying to make precise adjustments in a plugin, for example. Or use it to draw in automation, which is much more accurate than trying to use a touchpad. When you're done, turn it off, and the encoder knob goes back to adjusting the output volume. The inserts on the ID44 Mark II make it very easy to incorporate outboard gear right into your recording chain. It's a really cool feature if you've never used hardware inserts. So, here's a couple ways that we can use them. This is an external multi-effects unit. It has an expander, compressor, EQ, deesser, etc., all in one unit. Now, you could use multiple hardware units, like if you have a separate EQ, separate compressor, separate expander, and so on, and simply connect those units together. But in this case, we'll go with the single unit. I'll connect my microphone directly to the ID44 so we can take advantage of those super juicy preamps. Then I'll connect a quarter inch TRS cable from the send to the input of the hardware unit. Then run another quarter inch TRS cable from the output of the hardware unit to the return on the ID44. Okay. Now I need to set up the channel on the ID44. I'll need phantom power since I am using a Cloudlifter type device for the SM7B. Turn up the gain, and there we go. As you can see, the mic input is getting split off and sent out to the effects unit and back into the ID44. I can set up my hardware now, and as you can see, as I adjust the hardware unit, it affects the level of the mic input. Okay, we're all set. Now, when you record like this, you're not recording the dry mic input. Instead, you're recording the output of the hardware unit. So this is also a great setup if you're a live streamer and you don't want to use a bunch of latency inducing plugins in something like OBS. Instead, you can perfect your broadcast voice sound with your essentially zero latency external hardware and send that signal out to your live stream. Another way to use your inserts is to bypass the preamps and directly access the ADC. So you might do this for external effects units that you plug directly into, or even for external mic preamps that you're not using with the optical inputs. So let's say that I really love the sound of these tube preamps, and I don't want the sound colored by the preamps of the ID44. No problem. I'll plug my microphone directly into the external preamp and then run a quarter inch TRS cable from the output of the preamp to the return of the ID44. Set up your external hardware. And there we go. You're ready to record with your external mic preamp. Now set up like this, your gain knob for that channel on the ID44 won't have any effect because again, we're bypassing that preamp and going straight into the ADC. If you've never had an audio interface with inserts, man, it is a really cool feature to have. But above that, it's also extremely useful if you like to use external analog gear while recording. With the optical inputs and outputs, you can expand the ID44 Mark II into a true 20 in, 24 out audio interface. Now, how you set all of this up will depend on the exact external hardware that you are using. But in general, you would connect your Toastlink cable or perhaps cables to the ID44 and the external hardware. Ins go to outs, and outs go to ins. You also have the option of using the word clock output, 
but we don't need it for this. In the system panel, I'll choose ADAT. Then we need to match our sample rate for each device. So the ID44 is at 48K, and I'll match that on the outboard preamp. Now a lot of external gear will have a switch right on the unit. Then we need to set the default clock source. One device will be internal and the other will be external. Exactly what you choose will depend on the requirements of the external unit. But once all of that is set up, you can start routing your optical inputs and outputs in the ID mixer and in your DAW. Now I'm sure that most of you already know how to record a microphone and a guitar, but in case you don't, we'll cover it here. First, I'll turn down or just mute my speakers and plug in some headphones. Otherwise you'll get a feedback loop if you have a live mic in the same room as your speakers when they're turned up. Then I'll plug in my microphone. I'll use input three, no reason, could be any of them. Or of course you could connect four microphones and record all of them to separate tracks at the same time. But let's just stick to one for now. I'll create a mono audio track in my DAW, set the input to three in this case. I'll mute the input and record enable. The reason why we mute the input is so we don't get a doubling effect in our headphones because we're going to hear ourselves with no latency through the ID mixer and not through the DAW return. This is a doubling effect. So let's mute that input. Much, much better now. And now we can monitor ourselves with no latency through the ID mixer. This is a condenser mic, so I'll flip on phantom power, adjust the input gain, all right, hit record, and lay down your track. This is recording a microphone through the audience. ID44, Mark II. Once you're done, you could record another track. Okay, let's say we're done. I'll disengage the track, take them off of mute. I'll turn the gain down, turn off phantom power, bring our speakers back in, and then add some plugins to mix the track. Let's record a guitar, and this time we can leave our speakers turned up. I'll plug in a quarter inch TS cable into my guitar and into input one or two of the ID44. Create a mono audio track in your DAW. Set the input. And then turn down the channel fader in the mixer because we don't need to hear the dry direct input of the guitar. Then I'll throw in a metal amp plugin, record enable the track and set the input gain. Now this guitar has very high output active pickups, so it barely needs any gain at all. All right, now you can play and hit record when you're ready to lay down your track. You could also throw in a drum instrument and play along with that. The ID44 Mark II has two independent headphone outputs. However, you can connect three pairs of headphones if you don't mind channel one sharing the same audio stream. 
But if you ever need more headphone outputs, you can connect an external headphone amp. Some of the smaller headphone amps will only have a direct in. So in that case, you would connect a quarter inch TRS cable to one of the headphone outputs on the ID44 and run that into the headphone amp. Set the routing for that headphone output. And there you go. Now, most of the larger headphone amps will have a left and right input. So in that case, we'll connect two quarter inch TRS cables to a pair of outputs on the ID44 and run that into the headphone amp. Then we'll need to set our routing for outputs three and four. And I don't want main mix because then the volume knob will affect the level going into the headphone amp. So you could choose a Q mix. I'll even name it headphone amp. Set up the mix. And there you go. Another option would be to use DAW through. And then set up a headphone bus in your DAW. Make sure you turn down channels three and four in the main mix. And there we go. So you have a couple different ways to route your external headphone amp. Of course, there are also digital headphone amps and those would connect to the optical output. But what do you do if you want to use a headphone amp and multiple pairs of studio monitors? Well, in that case, you should invest in a dedicated monitor controller. With this unit, I can switch between two pairs of speakers and still use my headphone amp. You may also want to consider the Audient Nero, which can connect and switch through three pairs of studio monitors and a sub. Plus, it has four headphone outputs built in. So it's kind of like a combination of my monitor controller and headphone amp all in one unit. Loopback is a must have feature for any modern audio interface. I always say, do not buy an audio interface if it doesn't have loopback. You are going to need it. So what can you do with it? Well, you can record computer-based audio into your DAW. Think of things like a video playing in a browser or even a Zoom call. Plus, you could record a microphone along with it, which is great for things like podcasts. And this works on both Windows and Mac. Or on Windows, you can use Loopback to route audio out of your DAW and into something like OBS for live streaming or screen recording. And that's actually how I make all of the plugin review videos that we have here on this channel. Now, you can do the same thing on Mac, but you'll need an additional app. And I'll touch on those in that section. Now, since the ID44 is marketed to a professional audience, I'm going to assume that you already know how to use Loopback. But if you don't, I would highly recommend that you watch the loopback section of the Evo 16 video for an in-depth walkthrough of using loopback with OBS. Yes, these audio interfaces are different, but when it comes to setting up loopback and OBS, everything will be exactly the same, at least pretty much exactly. So again, if you are brand new to loopback, do yourself a favor and watch the loop back chapter of the Evo 16 video first. To record computer based audio into your DAW, we can use loop back. And this works for both Windows and Mac. Let's say I want to record the audio from this video playing in a browser. Now, there are a few ways that we could set this up. You could try a QMix for example. So feel free to experiment with your sources. But here's how we'll do it. I'll set the playback engine for Windows to Audient 1 and 2, and then set the loopback source to DAW 1 2, 
again, we could use a QMix or even the master mix. So after you get your ID44, experiment with different routings. But we'll go with DAW1, too. And we can see the loopback emblem on the DAW1, two channel. Create a stereo audio track in your DAW. Set the input to loopback. And this name may vary between DAWs. Record enable the track and mute it. Otherwise, you'll get a really nasty feedback loop. The reason why you'd want to use something like this and not mix solely real sense of space using only. If we play the video, you'll see the input in your DAW. So hit record and there you go. If you want to record a microphone along with the loopback track, just set it up the same way you always do. Again, make sure you mute the mic track in your DAW, otherwise it will feed into the loopback track. All right, that's all there is to it. What if you want to screen record a tutorial video for a plugin, or maybe you want to live stream yourself playing guitar or a virtual instrument, or maybe you want to podcast using plugins and audio tracks in your DAW. No problem. We can do all of that and more with Loopback. Now this will work natively on Windows, but you'll need to use an extra app to do the same thing on Mac. And I'll touch on those apps in a minute. But for now, let's cover the basics. In OBS, which by the way, OBS is completely free and anyone can get it. So in OBS, create an audio input capture, name it DAW audio, and set the input to loopback. The output of my DAW is analog one and two. So I'll set the loopback source to DAW12, or it could be main mix. It really just depends on what you're doing, but we'll go with DAW12. Then play back in your DAW, and there you go. You can see the input in OBS, and you're ready to record or stream. And OBS will capture everything going on in your DAW. Every input, every plugin, every virtual instrument, etc., etc. Now, if you're not getting input, just make sure the sample rate for OBS matches what you have set for the ID44. And on Windows, you may need to come to Sound Settings, find the Loopback Channel, and just make sure that it's at the same sample rate. Do the same thing for any other inputs or outputs that you want to use with OBS. If you want to record a microphone at the same time, but you don't want to run it through the DAW, in that case, simply create another audio input capture, name it microphone, and set the input. My microphone is plugged into input one, so we'll choose one, two. Then click a gear icon, advanced audio properties, and set the mic to mono. There we go. If you want to record the audio in OBS to separate tracks to edit later, you can set that up in here as well. Again, I would highly suggest that you watch the Evo 16 video if you don't know what I'm talking about. You can also record a webcam, just create a video capture device, name it webcam, and select it. Position it wherever you want. And there you go. If you happen to be using a green screen, then you can right click the webcam, filters, and add a chroma key. There we go. You're all ready to stream or record. Now, everything we've done on Windows will carry over to Mac except for how you route the audio. Unfortunately, Core Audio on Mac won't let us route the loopback audio 
into OBS, but we can do it with an additional app. One option would be the free black hole driver, but you're really better off purchasing an app, something like Ginger Audio, Ground Control Room, or Ground Control Caster, or Rogue Amoeba Loopback. Yes, these apps cost money, but they're going to save you so much time and trouble. I highly recommend that you simply purchase an app. You're gonna thank me later. Instead of trying to do this for free, just purchase something that works, all right? So to route your DAW audio with something like Rogue Amoeba Loopback, you would add the ID44 as a source. You can get rid of these cables, and there's a few ways that you could set this up, but let's do it like this. Come down to channels 21 and 22, and these are your loopback channels from the ID44. Connect them to the output. Take note of the name here, because this is the name of the input we'll be looking for in OBS. So come to OBS, and just like in Windows, create an audio input capture. Name it DAW Audio, or whatever you prefer. Then set the input to the loopback audio device that we just created. Play your DAW, and there you go. If you want to add a microphone to a separate track in OBS, we can create a new virtual device. Let's name it Microphone 3. Again, remember that name. I'll add the ID44, get rid of these cables. I have my mic plugged into input three. So from the Rogue Amoeba Loopback app, I'll connect three to both outputs. Come back to OBS, create another audio input capture, name it microphone. Set the input to that microphone three device that we just created. And there we go. Now we have the DAW audio and the mic audio on different tracks in OBS. Of course, you could always run the mic through the DAW if you don't mind that audio being combined. All right, all right, all right. So that is how you can use loopback to screen record or stream with your DAW. And this works with other streaming apps as well, like Streamlabs, Melon, Zoom, Skype, Google Meet, and others. Once again, if you are brand new to Loopback, I would highly suggest that you watch the Loopback chapters of the Evo 16 video, because we go much deeper into Loopback in that video. But as you can see, Loopback is an essential feature for any audio interface. Like I said at the beginning, you are going to need it. So that is the Audient ID44 Mark II 20 in, 24 out audio interface with its four juicy preamps, four analog outputs, optical IO, headphone outputs, speaker switching, talkback, buttons and switches for everything, scroll control, loopback, and way more. So if you want to further check out the ID44 Mark II, head over to audient.com go over the features, dive into the details with the tech specs, and decide if this is the audio interface for you. So that is everything you want to know about the Audient ID44 Mark II.